what is the right automation tool following on Andre's presentation? You know, Python, flexible but harder to learn. Ansible, Salt Puppet, easier to learn, but they're, they're limited. They're a little restricted in some ways. So how do you manage the balancing act between one tool and and maybe multiple tools where, where you, you choose multiple and, and something's the right tool uh, as opposed to just that, you know, the one tool that does it all. And related to this, what do you think it's gonna take for vendor APIs uh, to be complete? As we're using these tools and, and talking to different APIs, a lot of the vendor APIs kinda, kinda suck. So there's, there's a lot there, but. Um, mm -hmm. I'll yeah. start with the last one and the answer is money. Uh, <laughs> Vendors, vendors clearly understand one thing and it's making or more importantly not making money and you know consumers have the power here so you put that on your rfp and when you shoot down a vendor you go well it's because your api sucked or we're missing or whatever um that's that's how we change that marketplace uh, on that second question, I was a little thrown uh, thrown a little bit because it says Python flexible but hard to learn, Ansible, Salt Puppet, etc. Easier but more restricted. But I guess I don't see those as an either or. I I don't see it as one tool. I see it as maybe you use Python for certain things. Maybe you're going to use Ansible for certain things, and and so on. Now maybe between Ansible, Salt, and Puppet, you want to pick one and go with it. Uh, perhaps although. Uh, Ned, you were making the point that, you know, yeah, in Terraform, sometimes you use um, Ansible for some things. You can actually call an Ansible, you know, have an external action happen that Terraform calls. So you still don't have to make a choice there. But anyway, I don't see one tool to rule them all myself. I see different tools that fit into specific use cases that end up being the best tool for the job. And so you do end up needing to know multiple things. Uh, is that that where everybody's at? Yeah, I've done some work uh, trying to use Ansible to like pull and parse data and do validation, and it's awful. That is not like an the more you try to make Ansible a programming language, the more pain and awfulness you experience in your life. But also trying to use pure Python to do configuration management is just as awful. Um, and so there's the, you have to find these levels of abstraction in this balance, um, as it says here. Like there isn't there isn't a singular answer. It really is task by task dependent on what thingy you need. I mean, that's even true across Ansible, Salt, and Puppet. You know, Andre is optimizing for a specific thing, which is config enforcement. Other people optimize for, I hate Ruby and I can't install an agent, so I use Ansible. Like, you have to find a thing to optimize for and find the tool that best optimizes for that. Yeah. Well, a point to add to that too is, when you when you choose to go into the lower level, right? Um, you're you're you have to build that logic, right? When you stay at the higher abstracted level, you're dependent upon the module or the function that someone else developed, right? For instance, the Terraform Terraform provider for NSXT very closely matches some work a friend and I did a few years ago with NSXV, um, and he he did it in PowerShell, and he's the first person to tell you it's. 3,000 lines of very awful code. And when I look at the Terraform provider for NSXT and I see that an actual developer did that one and it's about a third the size, delivering mm -hmm. probably better logic than we were able to code, I was like, okay, this is the difference between us, you know, a couple guys, you know, I knew how the routing protocol worked, he knew how the PowerShell worked, and between, between the two of us, we got to a good spot. But that logic, so, the the modules and the functions carry out what you tell it to and you, your abstraction tries to hide you from that diving into that piece might be you know more than you can handle um if you have a good foundation you can write your own ansible module or you can do those things it's you could be biting off more than you can chew because you're you're now you're in charge of building the logic so if the logic has to go configure ospf you need to know every knob what are the default settings? What are you going to do? And it, 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 it's the same thing at every level. So you end up chewing off a lot, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go learn Python and not be able to carry out simple things and, and take care of things. It should, it's a tool in your tool belt that you need to develop and you should be able to use it any layer. And if you happen to want to develop your own module, great, but it, you got to focus, understand that it's used at multiple layers for multiple purposes. Guys, wondering just to throw this in, since we're talking about a multiplicity of tools that you might want to use, um, it seems like 
yes, have a multiplicity of tools, but maybe also have sort of a single source of truth or a single repository for all the, the frameworks and scripts and automations that you're going to have so that you can refine and, and sort of store and document everything that's going on. Is that, does that resonate? And if so, what would that repository be? I will tell you that in our experience, so I mentioned that, let's say in Puppet failover, because we built it incorrectly, we would use Ansible to run an ad hoc command to mm -hmm. blow out all the search. Um, so in that regard, um, we looked at kind of homogenizing Ansible and Puppet and using the same data backend, which is like, they both use YAML, but it turns out the data structure is just so vastly different, they're effectively incompatible, right? So you don't really use like a single source of truth and for all these tools, I think you would have multiple sources of truth. For example, IPAM is a source of truth, right? But that's your source of truth for your IP addressing scheme, right? But maybe uh, port to VLAN mapping, that's a different source of truth. Like it needs to be one, but it doesn't have to hold all the data that you have in one place. Okay? You just need to teach your tools to know about all these sources of truth and ask the right source of truth for the right uh, piece of the data. Thank <laughs> you.